Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I'm starting my rose pruning for the season. Starting with this bad boy behind me, this is Rose Duresht, which I've allowed to grow up a little bit too congested, a little bit too tall. So I'll be thinning this one out and bringing it down a little bit today and I thought some of you might want to come along and join me to pick up some tips. But before that I wanted to just quickly answer the question because everybody talks about rose pruning so much at this time of year coming out of winter I guess the question you want to ask is do should you routinely prune all of your roses every year at the end of winter and the answer to that question is of course no if you have a newly established rose if it's just gone into the ground last year or in the last couple of years and I'll show you ex some examples from footage here of some plants that were recently transplanted they don't need it they're small enough they're open enough they don't require any additional pruning it's really that when you get well established roses that put on a fair amount of growth every year that if you want to do a little bit of uh, thinning out to get some congestion out of the center and if they're vigorously growing and they're putting on a little too much height then they can benefit from pruning at this time of year when I say this time of year I do mean late winter early spring when the greatest risk of winter cold damage is past of course if you live in a climate that has uh, not such a harsh winter then you can feel free to do your pruning all the way through the cool season uh, if you are uh, if you don't have time this time of year, don't worry. Uh, this is just the front edge of that growing season. Oftentimes I will let my roses grow through all the way through their first flush of blooms for the season and then take them down later in May or June if I have to. Uh, just so long as I don't leave the pruning too late in the year, I shouldn't expect any damage from it. You could make the case that I shouldn't start a rose pruning tutorial looking at such an intimidating rose. This is uh, six feet tall, roughly about five feet wide and it is a tangled mass of mostly vertical stems that have grown into each other and they're crossing badly. So why do I start with such a such an example? Well honestly it's because I think this is where people get hung up on rose pruning. They come across a rose that uh, looks too difficult, doesn't easily conform to those rules, those easy rules of pruning roses, so they give up on it. So I want to show you how I tackle such an overgrown rose. Um, a lot of those rules are focused on getting rid of the spent flowers, the crossing stems, the dead disease damaged stuff at the top of the rose, and you could spend a lot of time futzing around around at the top of the rows uh, getting rid of that growth but the truth is this thing is going to require a more substantial prune. Uh, if somebody told me right now I want to take a chainsaw and take it halfway down straight away I wouldn't even argue with them. That won't be in my approach because I don't like chainsaw cuts. They're a little too ragged for, for my liking but in this case yeah I'm going to be targeting a height on this thing around three feet and I'm going to be looking to thin all of that growth at the bottom uh, by taking out some of the oldest crustiest uh, branches and preferring some of the newer uh, more vigorously growing canes when I do that that will get rid of a lot of what's at the top anyway I'm going to start by clearing out some around the base here and some of these lower branches just so I can see things a little bit better this won't take long and while I'm down there grabbing at spiny things it's a good time to mention that leather gloves are my choice to protect my hands I get good flexibility in them they hold up really well and they're not too expensive so nothing tricky about those cuts at all. I just used a regular pair of hand pruners. Felco was the brand. Uh, this is just a carbide sharpener that I used to put a bl uh, sharp edge on the blade before I got started. It just takes a couple of strokes, and then you're ready to go. And you do start with a clean blade. I've mentioned this before. People always ask, what do you clean it with? Uh, I used to give a more complicated answer. Now I just say use Lysol. That's fine, and it won't rust your blades. All right, I'm ready to go on to the next step here. I'm going to start identifying and removing some of the larger older branches on this from the base so that it actually does start to remove some of that bulk up top as well. And for this step I'll be using loppers most likely because they'll get an easier cut. Once I've identified a stem or a branch that I want to thin out, 
I try to make the cut as low down on the base of the rows as I can manage. I could make the cut a little bit higher, and that might make it easier to get the, the branch out, but then I feel like I'd be doubling up the work because I'd have to make the cut twice, once higher on the stem, and then later on lower to clean out the center of the rows. Now how you make the choice of which stems to prefer to leave in and which ones you don't is just an eyeball thing. You're trying to get a framework of of stems that have a little bit of space in between them. Uh, all things being equal, you choose to leave the ones that are younger and healthier and better looking. And so you can assess the overall uh, the overall health of the of the stem top to bottom, uh, but you don't have to go into great detail with this. As long as you choose a viable stem in an area and try to remove the competing stems from around it, you'll do just fine. Just pulled this one off. I don't know if you'll be able to see from that distance, but that brown across the base there, that dark stem, those dark streaks up here, just indicate to me that this is a little bit older growth on the rose. So taking some older congested growth out and allowing room for the newer, fresher stems to come in is something that I'm looking to do with this prune. Starting to see some space forming in the middle of the rows here, and one other note is that I took the opportunity to take a branch or two off of that fig to the right, and I also have a euonymus right behind it that we're starting to crowd the rows. So while you're pruning the rows, might be a good time to prune its neighbors too. And now that I've got the majority of the big stuff out, I'm going back to the hand pruners, and I'm gonna take this thing down to a maximum of about this height here, which would put it at about three, three and a half feet. And that'll give me uh, a good view of anything else I have to do before I call this finished. All right, so that's gotten me down to my overall shape and size. I'm gonna go handheld now, bring you in closer to the shrub, just so you can see the final touches and the final decision making. You can see that initial pruning there, which took me all of, oh, what, five to 10 minutes, uh, really achieved most of the goals that I have for pruning this shrub. It's uh, a far more manageable height and shape, and a lot of that congestion is out of the center of the shrub. And that congestion matters because the less air movement you have in the center of your shrub, the longer it holds moisture against its foliage, and the more likely it is to pick up things like black spot or powdery mildew or any other foliar type disease. Okay, so now that we've gotten into that stage, you can see there's plenty of room now to choose to clean it up even further if you'd like. This part is optional. You can go back in and start looking for the little nubs that are left behind. If you look up close, you'll definitely be able to find some stems that are blackened or should be nipped off, some old spent flowers, some of the finer details that if you really wanted to go after it, you could clean all of the little details out. You could certainly clean up around the bottom center of the shrub a little bit more and get rid of some of the old nubs of old growth. If you see any dead stuff still in there, uh, I think center of screen there you'll see a light brown stem that I'll probably nip out afterwards just to clean it up but all of that stuff is rather optional you're going to get the benefits of pruning even with just a rough job like this and since I've got you handheld here, just a very quick aside for those people who propagate roses. This is an own root sucker from the rose. Rose de Reste is an, uh, a, a sort of a Gallica hybrid. So it does suckering. And if you had a mind to do so, you could just follow that sucker back down into the ground, uh, find a spot where it is rooted, cut it off from the main plant, and you will have a brand new shrub rose. Uh, you can give away to friends or sell or do whatever you please with it. Well, if you have time for one more example, I'm gonna do a Floribunda, distant drums here. You can see that I didn't keep up with deadheading last year, so it has a lot of spent hips on it, uh, and it has some broken branches, dead disease stuff, but the process is exactly the same. Just have a look. 
just like I did with the previous example, I'm going to start down low and in the center of the rows, trying to, to hit those stems that are in the poorest condition and clear them out and thin them out from the base of the rows. Once I've done that all the way around the rows and I've gotten some space between the main stems, then I can choose a height and then I can prune straight across, trying to get the height and shape that I'm looking for for the season. Thanks so much for joining me as I prune the first couple of roses of my season. I'll continue to make videos of these whenever I come to a new class or style of rose that I think you should learn about pruning. Things like the shrub roses, the ramblers, maybe some of the pillars that I'll be training this year. If you have any questions or comments about any specific kinds of rose pruning, please drop those down in the comments below the video. And thanks again for watching.